Brad Whitaker, and this is the Sideline Dissonant, talking about mostly Boston sports today, but first, uh, USC-UCLA took place over the weekend, uh, and it was a quarterback battle everyone's been paying attention to all season between Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen. Uh, USC ended up winning the game, but Josh Rosen won the quarterback battle. USC won 28-23, but comparatively, Rosen's numbers were significantly better than Darnold's were. Uh, Rosen went 32 of 52 for 421 yards. He had three touchdowns and one interception, while Darnold went just 17 of 28 for 264 yards with no touchdowns, one interception, although he did have one rushing touchdown. And, you know, it it was good to compare the strengths and the weaknesses between Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen. Uh, Darnold needs to work on his decision-making. Uh, His decision-making isn't quite up to par of what it should be in the NFL. And as for Josh Rosen, I mean, he seems to be a pretty good decision-maker, and his pocket presence is great. Uh, He needs to work on protecting the football a little bit still, though. Uh, But Josh Rosen reminds me a lot of Matt Ryan, uh, and, and... I think Sam Darnold is a bit of a combination between Tony Romo and Andrew Luck. That's at least what I'm seeing a little bit. Uh, But I'm going to argue, like Andrew Luck did, I think Sam Darnold should stay in college another year uh, because of one reason and one reason only, the Cleveland Browns. We all know the Cleveland Browns are going to have to draft another quarterback, uh, It just didn't work out this year. Deshaun Kaiser was not the guy. I could have told you that eight months ago. But Deshaun Kaiser clearly doesn't seem to be first-string quarterback material, at least in Cleveland. So if I'm in Sam Sam Darnold's position, and and although I do feel Josh Rosen is fit for the NFL more than Darnold at this very moment in time, I still consider Darnold the better prospect. You might as well separate yourself from Josh Rosen or Josh Allen by staying in college another year and let the Browns take one of those guys because Sam Darnold, you're not going to have much of an NFL career if you end up going to the Cleveland Browns. There's no reason to, to expect Sashi Brown will build a competent team around him. I mean, just look at this year, what Sashi Brown has done as GM of, of uh, Cleveland. He fumbled getting Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, The reports coming out say that the front office wanted to leave work by 5 o'clock the day before the trade deadline. Everyone knew that head coach Hugh Jackson wanted Jimmy Garoppolo. And around 6, 7 o'clock later that day, once all the Browns front office members went home from work the day before the trade deadline, that's when the Niners got Garoppolo from the Patriots for one second round pick. And remember, Cleveland's been hoarding first and second round picks for three years now. They would have had more than enough to get Jimmy Garoppolo. And and they fumbled because they simply wanted to get home from work early. Then you got the next day, Tuesday, the trade deadline. The Browns had a deal done for A.J. McCarron, and they forgot to CC the front office on the email before the trade deadline. And then... You look at some of the other guys the Cleveland Browns have passed over over the last couple of years. They could have had Deshaun Watson. They could have had Carson Wentz. They could have had Dak Prescott. But no, they have Deshaun Kaiser. Well, at least they have A.J. McCarron. Oh, wait, they didn't CC the league front office in the email. So if I'm Sam Darnold, I want to stay the hell away from this. Because, I, I again, I think Sam Darnold's a lot like Andrew Luck, and the hype is going to be is a lot similar to Andrew Luck, and the hype will be even bigger if he stays at USC another year. Also, I think there's some unfinished business at USC for Sam Darnold. Uh, next year, they have a very tough schedule early on, but later it gets a bit easier. Early on, they have a road game at Stanford, they have a road game at Texas, and then they have a tough home game against Washington State. But... It's a button-up organization. Darnold will have been there, been the starter for a full year. We saw what he did in the Rose Bowl last year. I think you give him another offseason, another good recruiting year. It seems like USC has some great players coming in next year. If USC starts the season well next season, they could win out very easily. If they can get through September undefeated, I wouldn't be surprised if they finish the season undefeated. They have one final game against Notre Dame at the end of next year, but you never know what you're going to have with Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, if I'm Sam Darnold, that's what I would do. There's three guys right now. 
Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, and Sam Darnold. We all think Sam Darnold is the best prospect, although I think Josh Rosen is more ready for the NFL right now than Darnold. You might as well separate yourself from that pack, be the unanimous number one quarterback the year after, which Darnold will be, assuming he doesn't have any catastrophic injury, but, you know, you take out an insurance policy in case something like that does happen. You avoid Cleveland, make them pick up Rosen or or Allen, and then... You know, there'll be some teams in the NFL next year that end up having to tank midway through the season. Maybe the Giants give Eli another chance next year and it doesn't work out. And maybe that's the spot for Sam Darnold. Who knows? But I would want to stay from the Cleveland Browns. I want to stay as far away from them as possible if I'm in Sam Darnold's position. Avoid that organization. They are not going to build around you. They won't even give Hugh Jackson, the quarterback coach that they hired, the players that they want. How should you expect to succeed in the NFL playing for Cleveland next year? Stay away from the Browns. Stay another year at USC. You'll have a shot at the national championship. They're not getting into the playoffs this year, but maybe they'll get in next year with Sam Darnold. And again, good September for USC next season. They have a tough schedule, but if they can get past that, Darnold would have a pretty good shot at making it into the college football playoff. Stay at USC, Darnold. Don't go anywhere near Cleveland with a 10-foot pole. Entire season. That's incredible. Second and six. As Brady looks to throw. Pump fake goes the other way. And it's caught by Lewis. It makes a wiggle. And then dives for the end zone. Touch nap. And late off his back foot, you're going to see Deion Lewis get back. And off his back foot, the other side of the field, he throws the ball to Deion Lewis and Corey James. So, uh... Last season in the NBA, LeBron James should have won the Most Valuable Player Award. I was saying that. I was saying that at the end of the season. I thought Russell Westbrook was stuffing his stats. More than 80% of his rebounds came uncontested. And James Harden, you certainly could have made an argument that he deserved MVP, but I just don't want to give MVP to a guy who takes 50% of the possessions off on the defensive end. And I feel a lot, I feel a similar way about Tom Brady this year in the NFL. Uh, Remember last year, the NFL MVP came down to either Matt Ryan or Tom Brady. We know who won, it was Matt Ryan, but as we saw this year, we know who actually is the better quarterback. Matt Ryan benefited from having Kyle Shanahan there, and clearly Atlanta's going through a bit of a Super Bowl hangover. A couple years ago, the same thing happened with Cam Newton. Cam Newton's a very talented quarterback, but he throws off of his back foot every single time, and that's why he's more accurate throwing the ball 30 yards down the field than he is 5 yards down the field. He's entirely a product of his offensive line. Tom Brady should have won multiple MVP, more, many more MVPs, just as LeBron James did, but, you know, I, the reason why LeBron doesn't win the MVP in the NBA every year is because people are sick of it. They want to give it to the hot rising star, and I think the same thing is happening this year with Carson Wentz, although I think Carson Wentz is a much better franchise option than Matt Ryan is. Uh, here, here's just a play from Carson Wentz last night, a really athletic, incredible play. Guys that are 6'5 move like this. Watch this little wiggle inside against Wilson and get that ball off and convert that huge third down. Yeah, that was like 15, 20 yards down the field falling over. Carson Wentz, the Eagles are going to be just fine going forward. He's a great quarterback, and and look, both Brady and Carson Wentz made a strong case for MVP last night. Brady won in Mexico City. Carson went to Dallas and, and, and won there, but... I think Tom closed whatever gap he had between him and Carson Wentz. Let me just read off some of their numbers. Uh, Carson Wentz, he had a pretty significant advantage in the touchdown department. Uh, Now he has 25 passing touchdowns. While Brady has closed the gap, he's within three. He has 22. But Brady has a 110.9 passer rating. Carson Wentz is 103.4. Brady has a slightly higher QBR, 75.2. Wentz is 73.2. Uh, Carson Wentz has thrown five interceptions and has seven fumbles. Tom Brady has two interceptions and five fumbles. And then in passing yards, this is the real difference maker. Uh, Tom Brady has 3,146 passing yards, while Carson Wentz has just, just, I mean, it's still good, 2,430 passing yards. He also has a completion percentage of 60%, where Brady's rounds up to 69%. So, you compare the two numbers, 
Tom Brady should be the NFL MVP, especially if the season ended right now. And you know, look, midway through the third quarter yesterday in Dallas, Carson Wentz was just 10 for 23. He had 137 yards and a passer rating just above 75. And the Eagles were still up by 14 points. His running backs rushed for over 200 yards. They had 27 carries. And the Eagles' defense is really what carries that team. Now, look, Dallas and Philadelphia were both missing blindside tackles, and Carson Wentz handled it far better than Dak Prescott did. I don't want to take anything away from Carson Wentz, but the reason the Eagles have been successful and the reason the Eagles won on Sunday night against the Dallas Cowboys is because of many factors, including Carson Wentz, not solely because of Carson Wentz. Now, that doesn't mean Tom Brady doesn't have a lot around him in New England as well. I mean, he has three amazing tight ends now. Dwayne Allen as a third-string tight end is pretty good, and we know how versatile their running backs can be, and they, they basically are just additional wide receivers. But you have to give Tom Brady some credit for playing well this season without most of his wide receivers, especially early in the year. I mean, they're still figuring out how to work in Philip Dorsett into that offense. Danny Amendola has to line up in the slot a lot more than he used to. And, you know, Brandon Cooks, he's made a big difference, but Brady doesn't have the weapons he's used to having. And and that Patriots defense, it usually takes 8, 9, 10 weeks for them to start rolling. And finally, they're rolling. But Brady held the team at just two losses until then. As I said, I think Tom Brady deserves the NFL MVP award, but I think Carson Wentz will get it for the same reason LeBron James doesn't win the MVP award every single year, is because Carson Wentz is the new hotshot. Now, I think Matt Ryan was the new hotshot. I think Cam Newton was the new hotshot. I think Carson Wentz is ultimately going to be much, much better than those guys. I think he'll win multiple MVPs down the road. But I think that's what's going to keep Brady from winning, even if statistically he's superior and the Eagles have a better all-around team. But, I mean, just here's a play that Tony Romo was talking about last night. It just seems like a simple touchdown Brady to Amendola, but Tony Romo broke it down pretty well. Him and a lot of quarterbacks, if not, watch so much communication. Hey, I'm telling you guys, hey, Amendola's like, what am I doing? He's pointing out the protection, who's blocking here, Amendola, what am I doing? Yeah, no, 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 let's do this here. Wait, 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 in my pressure. Let's do, let's go ahead and run the in and out. And then he knows in the back of his head, I'm just going to buy time. Here we go, subtly slide, and I got the in and out that I signaled. There you go, touchdown. Thanks for And, you know, just that veteran communication. Carson Wentz is a vocal guy. He's just I don't think he deserves the MVP award over Tom Brady. Brady's made up whatever gap he has. He has about 700 more passing yards. He's within three in uh, the touchdown department. Uh, Three less interceptions, two less fumbles. Uh, I think Brady deserves the MVP, and he's been working with a little bit less. But it's going to go to Carson Wentz because he's the guy everyone's excited about. And, And you should be. What's going on in Philadelphia right now is pretty exciting. Curry. And on a switch by Brown, shoot the link for Brown, and came up with the steal, takes it away! So uh, that was on Thursday night. The Boston Celtics beat the Golden State Warriors. Uh, They won again this weekend. They're now winners of 15 straight. They play the Dallas Mavericks tonight. So by the time you're watching this, that streak could be up to 16 because the Mavericks are are, are off to a pretty rough start this season. And they seem to be going into full-on tanking mode at this point. But uh, look, if you look at the Boston Celtics and their offensive numbers, just their offensive numbers, ignore what they're doing on defense, it's really easy to say, how the hell are they winning all of these games? Which is a testament to how amazing their defense has been. Uh, the Celtics has have a defensive rating just under 96, which is by far the best in the league by, by like three points. It's not even close. Uh, they're holding their opponents to 43% shooting and under 95 points per game. And they held the Golden State Warriors to under 90 points. And... You know, what makes them so good defensively is their ability to aggressively make switches and not really lose anything at all. Uh, You know, Isaiah Thomas was a big burden to them defensively, and you get Brad Stevens credit last year for hiding him against teams like Washington, but we know what happened when LeBron went went against Isaiah on those pick and rolls. The Celtics couldn't do anything defensively. And, you know, Kyrie's not the greatest defender in the world, but he's stepped up this season. And now they have a lot of size. You know, Jalen Brown as a shooting guard, is that's a lot of size to have at the two position. And because of it, 
The Celtics don't really have to worry about fighting through screens or anything. They can just make switches whenever it's convenient, and they don't really lose that much, and that's also why they're so great at defending the perimeter. In fact, the Celtics are so good at defending the perimeter, I would argue that they match up better against the Golden State Warriors than they do the Cavaliers. I mean, Cleveland is plays that sort of old school's 90s, early 2000 isolation basketball game. Uh, they, they, they switch, you know, the Celtics, they can't switch against players like uh like they do against LeBron because LeBron's a mismatch to just about every player in the league and because of that the Celtics are built for a high perimeter shooting passing teams like Houston or Golden State uh where they're not as well built against a team like Cleveland uh but look the Celtics offense is a bit of a problem even though nobody's talking about it because they've won 15 probably going to be on to 16 in a row Uh, The Celtics' offense is 21st in terms of offensive rating. They're 27th in the league in field goal percentage, and they're in the middle of the pack. They're 17th in three-point shooting percentage, uh, which is not good because they shoot the 11th most threes in the NBA. And, uh, you know, everyone talks about the improvements that Jalen Brown has made, and he has made a lot of improvements, uh, but his numbers really aren't that different from last year. The difference is they've doubled his minutes. His field goal percentage is about the same. Uh, Now, he has improved his three-point shot. I think he's a better defender than he was last year, and he's certainly a much, much better ball handler than he was last year. But just remember, Jalen Brown, the reason he's playing so well is mostly because Brad Stevens just doubled his minutes. Now, if he's, if he keeps shooting around 40% from three, then that's pretty significant. But, uh, you know, Jalen Brown took, t- took a step in the right direction. Now, Kyrie Irving, his numbers are nowhere near where they were last year. He's still doing a great job. He's distributing the basketball a lot better. He's really picked up on Brad Stevens' offense well. But, Look, the Celtics are winning because of their defense, not because of their offense, and I think that is ultimately going to be the difference between a deep playoff run or losing to the Warriors or the Cavs in in six or seven games. You know, if they play the Warriors in the finals, they're not going to hold them to under 100, much less 90 points consistently like they did on Thursday night. You know, the Warriors will get their shit together and, and, and be able to score more than 100 points. Uh, but I think LeBron is the real roadblock, and without Gordon Hayward, I'm not sure if the Celtics are going to be able to get past him, uh, because defensively, they match up better against the Warriors than they do the Cavaliers. LeBron can beat anyone in the league one-on-one. You're going to want to have Gordon Hayward out there to comp- compensate for the Celtics' offensive struggles. Now, this is good, though, because the Celtics have won all these games. They have... In, in a 17-game uh, sample, they have the greatest defense in the history of NBA basketball. But their offense is very mediocre. And without Gordon Hayward, it's going to be tough for them to get past LeBron in a seven-game series. So let's hope Hayward can get back by the postseason. Uh, I think he can. We haven't heard much about it lately, but uh, he, he needs to be rehabbing pretty quickly. I mean, he's shooting baskets in a chair against Brian Scalabrini, so, you know, that's all you need to see. Uh, So I'll be back tomorrow uh, with my NFL Power Rankings, the Monday Night Football game tonight. Be sure to watch that. Until then, I bid you adieu.